Cherry Picker writes, I was thinking about this last night as I was selecting papers for a fun beach layout. I had selected some papers and they were of a good color scheme, but they didn't evoke the right feeling for me. Does that happen to you? Is that something you consider when selecting papers for a project? Glitter Girl, can you help Cherry Picker color code her captured memories? Of course I can. Of course, Cherry Picker doesn't really have a problem that needs to be solved, just a really interesting topic for discussion, and I think there's a lot we can say about color. If you have a look at the link that she's posted, it has the different meanings that go along with different colors. So the symbolism of different um, colors and, and what they mean to us on a, on a more subconscious level. And her question raised an interesting point of what's the color that you use the most often and does it have a certain link to the emotions that go along with your pages. And if you look back through the layouts I've been creating over the past year, there's a great deal of turquoise. In fact, if you look at Glitter Girl's page of, of just the thumbnails, you just see that little detail shot. Almost every thumbnail includes turquoise. Even if the other colors are different, there's turquoise in there somewhere. So it's it's time I, I um, admit that I, I use so much turquoise and have a little look at why that is and perhaps what it means about my scrapbooking. Today I'm going to take you through a page using some turquoise and um, but also some other colors of course. So this is um, from the cut apart sheet in the new Dear Lizzie Fifth and Frolic from American Crafts. I've used part of it um, and it has all different pieces that you can cut apart. I really like that American Crafts have started adding these pieces where you're just paying for a sheet of paper so it's the standard paper price but you can cut it all up so it ends up cheaper than die cuts um, and of course they're double sided so if there's one that doesn't work for you you can have some sort of coordinating or textured pattern on the back. Uh, okay so that's Fifth and Frolic. A little bit of turquoise print from Studio Calico Yearbook, which has a white and yellow flower on the other side. This beautiful turquoise sky from October Afternoon Woodland Park. Also turquoise and green and blue on the other side. A little bit of just gray cardstock, and, and there are more colors of cardstock available in the shop now than before. I've started carrying some different colors by American Crafts. American Crafts cardstock cuts really well in the Silhouette machines if, uh, if you're into die cutting. And then I wanted to add something that wasn't turquoise, and I'm going to go with some pink. This is from the Pebbles Country Picnic Collection, which is a little bit older. It's not old, old. It's still in the store, and it's now on sale. So lots of... Um, hot pink and green in that collection, this kind of shade of green. Um, so have a look, there's a lot of nice uh, versatile prints, like this is a polka dot but it's embossed. So it has a really nice texture on the page, just a really lovely collection with some really rich um, colors. Okay, so I'm going to start there and I'm also going to talk to you about some embellishments and how you can change the color and I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to use this pink polka dot as my background and then put the other layers on top. And I thought that Cherry Picker's question was really interesting because Georgia O'Keeffe, um, she said that she painted because she, um, she could say things with colors and with shapes that she couldn't say with words. And I think that's a really interesting element for a scrapbooker to consider in their work because that's what we're adding that's what makes this different than just a plain photo album so worth worth considering what what is it about the color that can add more meaning to your pages okay so I want to use that polka dot as a background um, to add that darker richer color around the edge and the contrasting color but one thing I really like if I have two patterns that are ever so different, like this is more photographic print to the, the more classic polka dot, is to separate that with a solid. So I'm just going to add um, a gray mat around the edges, and I think for inking today I'm going to go with black ink. So just add a little bit of black ink to this piece, and then mat it with gray cardstock and attach that to the background paper. So now I have that contrasting background with the solid color to break it up in the middle. And I have three photos today. I've printed them at three by four. So a little bit smaller than um, 
than the usual 4x6, just for something a little bit different. And I want to use them in a row like this with another piece of paper behind. So what I'm going to do is mat them all together and create kind of a little pennant that can hang from the top of the page. So that's where I'm going to use my other turquoise paper. So just add each one to, I think I will go flush to the top of the page. Maybe I will. I can always trim it back if I decide that's the better deal. Oops. So just adding these along this strip of paper and then I'll cut it to the shape that I want to use on the page. So from here, I'll cut this strip so that I have the sides even and then um, add that pennant shape to the bottom. Just a little bit of a different photo mat. Since the photos are smaller, I can put three all in one quite narrow mat and then just um, add a little bit of extra cutting to the edge so that it's a slightly different shape than a plain rectangle. Now that's attached to my background and I've got this idea of the group of three. So I went to the cut apart sheet and there are three of these smaller pieces and all three have colors that match so I can go ahead and include all three of them. And I like the idea of them building this, so I'm making a bit of an L shape. And then the decision is do I have them kind of floating here or do I put another layer of paper behind so that everything is connected and layered. So I think what I'll do is find a, a paper that I can try behind the three and have a look and see which look I prefer. Neutral, like this pale gray polka dot. This is from Dear Lizzie Neapolitan, but there are similar papers in the Calico Classics collection and in plenty of collections. It's a nice neutral with a small polka dot, easy pattern to use on all sorts of topics. This can make a, a good layer because I do have a bit of cream tone in the sky paper, but white tones in the other papers and choosing from some of the others meant um, there was perhaps a little bit too much emphasis on the white or the cream but this is kind of a mid-tone and the polka dot is white so that will match with this but it's not such a bright white that it um, will clash with the the sky paper in the background so I'm going to try tucking this underneath the whole piece here so I'll have to pull the photo strip up And I'll just end up making this L shape a little bit more obvious. But by adding this sort of tonal quality to the, the page, I'm, I'm not throwing in another color, so I'm not making a big change in the emotional meaning if you, um, are, if you want to read a layout for its color in that, in that sort of way. So now I can have these layered and then have a little bit of border here. I think that's a good spot to add some washi tape, of course. And I just got this one from the store and it, it cracks me up. It's very typical of what you would see in, in Japanese washi tapes. There's a polka dot, or actually it's a teeny tiny star if I look at it really carefully. It's a teeny tiny star but reads like a polka dot with um, pink cameras on top and then these cute little captions that say things like happy and no photo, no life. Um, so I'm just going to run that underneath the photo as well. and line it up along one of the lines of polka dots and I can run it all the way across the page then I can bring in these little cards and add them on top and I think to make sure they keep that, that bit of dimension and the layered look I'll do that little trick by adding pop dots just to the top of each card. So now I have three little cards across there grounded with the little row of pink cameras and I'm still mixing 
mostly turquoise with these highlights of pink. Now there are plenty of reasons why I could have chosen pink for this color because there are all different techniques you can use to choose the color for your layout. So one of the easiest ways and probably the way that many of us started picking colors for our layouts is to pick something from the photo. So I could take the pink and the purple from these pictures and scrapbook it all in pink and purple. Or I can use that as a starting color and go elsewhere with it. So in this case, there's a little bit of pink, and the pink's certainly going to be present, but I'm not picking up on the purple tone. I'm um, then changing that out for the turquoise, just so that then there's that contrast. If I did the whole layout in pink and purple and then put pink and purple photos on top, it's a bit too much for you to get all of the, um, the hints of what I want you to see in the photos. So choosing a contrasting color works quite quite well. Now, in this case, I actually started the other way around because Cherry Picker's question led me to think I should start with the color I use most often, and lately that's turquoise. So then I just went from there thinking what else could I add in, and I, I always like turquoise and pink as a nice combination. And you can get a little bit more theoretical about why that works by looking at the color wheel. Um, Amy Heller has a, a great class here at 2P's, a workshop that's all about um, color like that. So um, I'll link it up in the product list, but she can help you understand how colors go together if you want to look at it from a color theory point of view, like complementary colors and um, all the different ways that, that the color wheel can help you make color schemes. and. It works both for picking something from your photos and going on from there. So maybe I pick the pink and then I look at the color wheel to see what colors would um, create different color schemes based on that. Or um, it doesn't have to be picking from the photos. She, she shows you great examples of, of sometimes how having the photos in a completely different color than the layout can actually really, really work. Okay, so I also wanted to... Um, to bring into the this equation a little bit of of a shopping tip if you want to really get into using color on your pages and and all the meanings or the combinations and all the different ways you can use color and that is that some things that you can then color yourself could be a really great addition to your stash so things like mistable thickers and I've just grabbed the new star shape this is kind of in their Christmas range but of course I think you can use stars anytime it doesn't have to be Christmas and these are the new color magic Car, um, chipboard letters from Heidi Swap and things like this are are really easy and, and they're designed to add your own color so instead of needing chipboard letters in every color under the sun you have one set and then you custom color just the letters you want to use on your title so and um, something that, that can be really um, really efficient for your shopping if you want to scrap like a lot of different colors or really get into the finer shades of color scheme. So I'm going to use both those letters and the stars in my embellishment. But I also pulled out some other pink and turquoise things before I get started um, with the coloring. I grabbed these little vellum pieces from the new vellum die cuts. Um, there's some gray polka dots and stripes there and a turquoise uh, zigzag or chevron. These new micro monogram letter stickers from Basic Gray, teeny tiny little letter stickers in all different colors, great, um, great to pick up the colors that you use the most. And of course, I often use the mini markets, and these now come in hot pink, which makes me very, very happy indeed. And then um, from Midway, the label stickers and the word stickers all had, um, they both have both pink and turquoise and gray in the color scheme, so I thought I would have all of those handy. I think for my finishing touches, I wanted to add some flare buttons, and these are, and this is a brand new set that I just got. Um, and so there's turquoise, gray, and black, and a ledger, um, so an off-white there. Um, and this is called a flare for buttons, and there's all different themed packs. So this has turquoise wood grain hearts. What's not to love about that? Uh, cameras, little um, clouds, stars, all sorts of different things. But that was just one particular set. So I have now, in this L-shaped layout, some places that the, the L-shape will help me 
decide where things should go. So I now have two big gaps. I have this big space here and I have this space here. This is a great spot for a title and I can include my journaling either on these cards or above them here in the in the sky of the layout. I also want to make sure I add some detail up here because I I don't want this kind of hanging mat to just look like um, it's not attached or in any way part of the layout, it just happens to be sat there. I want to make sure this looks purposeful that it's hanging from the top. So um, that may be with some stitches and then perhaps a little bit more embellishment here in this corner because I could add something here without um, obscuring anyone in the photo or any of the, the sign details or anything like that. So this little empty corner would be okay to add a little bit more embellishment. So um, I'm gonna figure out what I can spell for my title and start working on that in this space here. With the Color Magic letters, they're chipboard and you can punch them straight through and leave the adhesive backing on without any trouble. So they're nice and easy to color just the letters you want. So I've picked out my letters and made sure they'll fit in that space. And then I can go about coloring them. And you can color them with ink, with mist, with um, all sorts of any watercolor, anything you like, and it has a polka dot resist pattern. So I'm going to add some turquoise ink and I'm going to kind of test my color just on a an open spot that it, that's going to be wasted on the chipboard to make sure it's going to be the shade that I want and then I'll color each of the letters. So I'm just picking up um, some turquoise ink on a foam applicator and then I can color it onto the um, chipboard just a little bit of the extra to have a look at how that particular color is going to come out on on that one and I think this comes out too blue so I'm going to look for one that's going to come out a bit more turquoise. Okay go figure the one that looks more blue on the ink and then the turquoise one actually looks more turquoise and the other one looks blue so that's why it's good to test because <laughs> different surfaces take inks differently so sometimes it's not the color that you expect it to be. So then you can color each piece separately and you decide how intense that color is going to be because you can continue to add more layers of color, you can blend your colors on top, you can make them fade so you can have a bit of an ombre effect, you can make it really dark at one end of the letter and fade into a lighter shade. Because there's this resist pattern, those polka dots are going to automatically just show up on the letter. Really, really simple and you can make every title the color that you want. If you want to mix up your colors easy or if you want to have it all the same color, but you're going to decide for each letter so then um, you can get more out of the package because you can customize it for every page. To add the rest of my title, I want to add a little bit of the vellum underneath. And several of the pieces in the vellum die cuts come as speech bubbles, but you can easily take them back to just an oval shape or a rounded rectangle, all different sizes in the pack. So um, that's the sort of, of shape that I want to use. And I'm just going to tuck that underneath these letters and I've just put adhesive on a little bit that I can then hide behind the lettering. And then I'll use the others in the embellishment but wanted to have something down at the bottom of the page that would be repeated. So I have the smaller letter stickers to spell out the rest of my title. So I'm going to use these two pinks together with that bolder word in the turquoise. So I can add my writing here on the cards and then mix up those two pink alphabets. So one is a block and one has a regular cutout letters. And I've included the vellum here so that I can include a bit more of it up here in the embellishment and have it link. And then I have just that big splash of the turquoise lettering. So now I have all the, the really important stuff done. The photos are there, there's a title, there's writing, the date's there. Um, and now I can add in just some fun embellishment. And for that, I want to make some of these stars match the same shade as the lettering. So I can just come in with the same ink and apply it to the thickers. And just like the chipboard, it's a case of going um, not too quickly, a little bit of ink at a time will let you build up the color and you can use 
Um, obviously they're called mistables, so you can certainly use mists on these, but you can use ink, you can use watercolor, and you can draw on them, you can stamp on them. So I want to have a few in different sizes. And that way, even if the shade of ink that you use for a title or, or whatever you're color coding, and even if it doesn't completely match the paper, if you don't, if you don't get the shade 100% right, then by adding some more elements that are the exact same ink color, it will match. I wanted to make sure I brought some embellishment up to the top corner and then also add a little bit more here somewhere, perhaps in this space as well. So I have um, those additional vellum pieces and I wanted to make these into ovals as well. And then I also wanted to use a bit of a label sticker at the top. So this one is a bit too big to go up here, but this one could fit quite well. And in fact, it could tuck behind there and then I could get more of it. I could use more of it on the page by having more than one piece. So just tuck this behind. And then wanted to bring this up to the top of the page. So on these labels, I can use, actually I won't cut it on the sheet, I'll put it on the page and then cut off the extra. So I can just turn the page over. So I'm starting to get some um, the larger layers, the background pieces there, and then I can bring in these smaller elements, like that star shape, and finding a place there where that can touch as many of the layers as possible so that it brings all of the pieces together there. And the little badges. So I'm just looking to see what my best options would be. I quite like this, um, since I'm using cloud paper, this little gray with white clouds. And then to attach these, just add um, pop dots behind. I can repeat that um, same motif down here because I've used another of the little flare badges from that same pack and that tiny bit of the label that I cut off, I've just put underneath there too. It's just a tiny little um, hint of the same sort of uh, embellishment. So I can finish putting my stars around the page. I added that one at the top, but I haven't added any down here. So I also have this space here that on this side that I wanted to add something. So maybe I used the other half of that chevron vellum piece here. And add a star to cover those layers. And then I've got these tiny little stars that I can scatter about as well. So there's my finished page for today. I just added a tiny little label here and some word stickers in the gap up here at the top and decided to let all this lovely sky paper just stay open and um, on show so that you can tell what it is. I think if I cover up much more of it, it won't be clear that it's a sky at all. So um, this week, focus on using color in different ways on your pages. Have a look at the link that Cherry Picker posted and see if the colors that you use uh, match the meanings and the feel and, and join in the discussion about whether you choose colors for your pages based on what's in the photos or the emotion that you have or just um, using a color wheel, anything like that. So create a page, it can be any style, and we're just going to discuss the color. So write a little bit about it in the description. And as far as the colors I've chosen and the links that, uh, that were posted, well, turquoise is between blue and green, and blue is the color of, of sky and intelligence and logic, apparently, according to this link, and green is the most calming of colors, and, uh, and obviously very earth-based, uh, so you have the sky and the earth. Well, turquoise is in between those two, so apparently I'm um, a little bit 
earth and sky and all my layouts lately. Uh, maybe that means I have my head in the clouds a little bit. Um, and then pink uh, comes from red, and red is the most powerful color for branding. So I find that really interesting because pink is normally just thought of as a feminine version of red so um, a little bit less bold but all of the uniforms we wore were serious were certainly um, branding branding for what we were doing and all that that crazy pink and purple and not necessarily feminine but something that wasn't meant to be aggressive something that was meant to be helpful so an interesting little turn of events talking about color um, enjoy choosing the colors for your pages this week and thank you so much for watching Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.